I'm posting two different versions of this video, and this one shows everything you need to know, the full process for setting up your big green egg and cooking the ribs. If you want to see the shorter version without all the setup for the big green egg, click this video in the top right corner and it'll take you over to the other version so you can save yourself a few minutes. Welcome back to Grill This, Smoke That. It is a beautiful Sunday afternoon here in Georgia and today we're going to be preparing some baby back ribs. I'm gonna be using my big green egg smoker to get those cooked to perfection and I'm gonna show you step by step from beginning to end of the cook, including how I set up my big green egg for the smoke. I'm super excited about this meal, so let's go ahead and get started. The first step is to purchase your ribs. I purchased these at Sam's Club. Uh, they come in a pack with three racks. Uh, you can also buy one and a half racks from there, uh, but I buy most of my meat from Sam's Club. I'm not sponsored by them. That's just where we have our local membership. And then the next step is to remove this membrane on the bottom. It's not absolutely necessary, but you get a lot better bite, in my opinion, if the membrane is removed. And you can see it's easy to do with a dry paper towel. So you get that dry paper towel and it allows you to grip that slippery membrane a lot easier. And then you can just pull it off. If you need to get the membrane started, you can use a little kitchen knife, little butter knife and slide under the edge of the membrane. But I typically don't find the need to do that. So I start with another paper towel. You can see the membrane right here is separated a little bit. So I can grab right there and just start pulling. And if they're cut well, the membrane will come off all in one piece. So don't struggle with that membrane, just grab your paper towel and rip it off. All right, with our membrane off, I have already rinsed these ribs to get any of the blood on it. So if you ever buy meat, uh, just so you know, in a cryovac, and it has a little bit of a smell when you get it, that smell is from the juice that is in the packet. It is not that the meat has been spoiled. So just go ahead and uh, rinse off that meat and the smell will go away. If the smell doesn't go away when you do that, then it probably does mean that your meat has some issues and most places will let you return it. So now I'm just drying off the ribs here with some paper towels. And then we're going to get a binder on here and we will start getting our rub on it. And I always start with my rub on the bottom. And today I'm gonna work with the one clean hand and one dirty hand method. For my binder, I'm just using French's mustard here. It doesn't impart any flavor on the ribs. You just wanna get a good coating all over so that the, the rub has something to stick to. It doesn't stick to bare meat extremely well. Next thing we're going to do is apply our rub. I have the barbecue rub. This is Malcolm Reed's Killer Hogs rub. It's got a lot of paprika in it, which I really like. So I'm going to shake it on here. One thing that people make a mistake doing when applying their rub is they think that because of the name, you're supposed to rub it in. And rubbing it in just forms clumps. We want a nice, even coat uh, of our rubs. And the second rub I'm gonna to use today is the Honey Hog from Meat Church. Uh, this is available, I buy it locally now at Academy Sports and Outdoors but I really like the sweetness that that rub provides on ribs. Um, we also use it on chicken and it doesn't have a ton of paprika. So that's why we, why I combine it with the barbecue rub from Killer Hogs. If you're watching this video, I know you already love using your big green egg. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications for my channel. All right, so these are ready to sit. I'll let these sit while the egg comes up to temp. I typically give it uh, about an hour to an hour and a half. If you want to, you can wrap them and put them in the frig refrigerator, uh, but you don't want them to go uh, too warm before putting them on the egg. So a nice chill from the refrigerator is fine. So I'll get these wrapped up, put in the fridge, and then in about 30 minutes, I'll start my egg because I like to give it 30 to 45 minutes to set up as well. And we'll get these ribs on and I'll take you step-by-step step through the full cook. I'll be adding chapters to the description of this video. So if you don't need to see how to set up your egg, be sure to check that description and you can click through to the different points. You can also see little marks on the bottom of the screen that allow you to do the same. So I have the kick ash basket. I'm just going to shake out the ash from that. And then I have a little paintbrush that I use to sweep all the ashes down into the bottom. And I also have the kick ash can. So I'm gonna use my gloved hand to rake the ashes back into the bowl from the opening. 
then I can just lift that out and dump it. I keep a metal can underneath my table so that I can dump the cold ashes in there. Uh, I highly recommend if you do that, that you use a metal can just in case there are some live ashes still in there. But it's been a few days since I cooked, so I know that mine's completely dead. So now I have my old lump in here ready to be reused. So I need to add some of my wood I'm gonna be use, using to smoke with today, as well as some more lump charcoal. So I'm gonna be using apple wood today. And you don't need a ton of smoke for ribs. So I'm just going to add two chunks in here. Then I'm gonna fill up a little bit more lump and put a, another chunk or two on top. I'm making a little hole down in the center here because I do like to start my egg from the bottom of the lump. I have a whole video that I'll link in the top right corner of the screen right now showing how I light my egg. But I'm using an oil soaked paper towel right there in the center. I store them out here by my egg table in just an old pickle jar. And once I'm ready to light, I will just light this and it burns up from the bottom the way that fire naturally builds. So let me get some more lump added in here and then a little bit more smoking wood and we'll be ready to get it lit. I store my lump in the garage. So I use a cardboard box to transport it back and forth as I need to add some. And this is Fogo Super Premium Lump. You can see it's got really nice large pieces in it. Uh, they're great for smoking. So it doesn't uh, leave any chance for the egg to get air holes to get clogged up and have poor airflow. I really love using Fogo for the smoking process. And this is only gonna be about a four hour max cook today. So I don't need a ton of lump, but as you know, you can always reuse your lump. So that's about as much as I'm gonna put today. I'm right at the split of the fire bowl and the fire ring. Uh, the bowl is the round part that sits on the bottom that's shaped like a bowl. And then this is a fire ring. So I am ready to light my lump today. And I need to let it go uh, for about 30 to 45 minutes after it's lit. So make sure you do this well in advance of when you plan to cook. And then I've got a nice fat chunk of apple wood that I'm going to put right in the middle when it's time to start cooking. With everything ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and start my lump just by lighting that paper towel. I'm going to add a piece of lump right here over the top to make sure it has something to burn. And I'm going to leave the egg open for about five to 10 minutes until I see the coal start to burn. And then I'll shut it down with the vents both wide open to let it get, uh, let the fire spread a little bit. And then I'll dial it down to the temperature that I want it at. It has been seven minutes. You can see that these pieces have started to catch. It's smoking a lot and crackling. So I'm going to shut this down. I have my top vent completely open and my bottom vent completely open and the fire will start to spread around in the egg more now and i'm going to watch the temperature rise when it hits about 300 degrees here i'm going to add the plate setter and then let it all come up to temperature and let it balance out between 250 and 300. my temperature is up to about 300 right now so i'm going to open my egg i'm going to add this last chunk right here in the middle and I'm going to be cooking indirect today, so I'm going to add the plate setter. I just wrap this in foil to keep all the drippings off of it. I'm not using a water pan today. I do sometimes and not others. I just don't want to get one together today. And actually today I'm, I just purchased this rib rack. This is a Weber brand. It was $10 cheaper than the Big Green Egg brand. But it sits right here and you can line your ribs up here. And it does fit in the egg with both the plate setter and the rack in. So I'm gonna be using, it's actually a roasting pan, so you can use it this way for a rib rack or this way for a roasting. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this put in here and let everything come up to temperature. And once it's uh, the smoke clears, I'll be putting my ribs on. This is also the point I'll dial in my vents. I'm gonna go about a half inch on the top and the same on the bottom, about a half inch. Some people, leave one completely open and just control with the other, but I've always had good luck controlling with both vents. It's now time to get the ribs on and I'm going to be, I think putting them in these two slots right here. I'm gonna get them in there and see how well they fit. Again, I've never used this particular rib rack. I played with the position just a little bit and I decided to make them both go the same direction and curl them around. My goal is to keep them, all the meat above the plate setter. You can see there's gaps between the legs here 
And my goal is to keep the meat over the plate setter so there's no direct heat getting to them. You could also cut these in half. There's plenty of room for more racks of ribs here, so you could cut them in half. But for presentation purposes today, I decided to leave them whole. It's been an hour and you can see we're dialed in at about 250. I'm gonna give you a quick peek just so you can check your own progress. For the spritz, I'm using two parts apple juice to one part apple cider vinegar. And I just spray it on the outside here. That sugar from the apple juice is also gonna help set up the bark on these. Just get them nice and wet and down for another hour. We're at the two and a half hour mark now. They're looking really nice. Do a little more spritz on them here. This rack is almost done. Get you a little closer so you can see. You can see the bones starting to peek out. The meat's pulling away from the bone. So those are getting close to being done. And we really want somewhere north of 190 internal temperature. So I do have my thermal probe here. You can stick it down between two bones. So we got maybe 20 more minutes on this rack. This one's got a little bit more meaty. So it's got a ways to go. So we'll probably pull this one off early and wrap it and then wait for time to eat. I'm actually going to do what's called dusting on the ribs right now. And that's just shaking a light layer of rub over them. And I'm using this honey hog because I want it to caramelize a little bit. This rack looks really nice. And then I'm going to mist them one more last time here. Let that rub adhere. And I'm switching the positions of the two. So I moved the one that needed to cook a little bit more to the center. Because typically the back right portion of your egg is the area that gets the hottest. So this area right in here is usually the hottest uh, on most cooks. Now we're gonna shut it down and I'll be pulling this one here off in about five or 10 minutes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this rack off. Careful not to damage it. And that is beautiful. Check that out. Pulling away from the bone, not breaking through the bottom side. Hit that thumbs up for these awesome ribs. Since one rack finished sooner than the other, I'm going to wrap this second rack. And to do that, I'm going to lay it down on some foil and fold up around it like this. And I'm gonna pour in some of the liquid that I was misting with. And this is going to help speed up the cook on this other rack. And once they're wrapped, you can actually bump the temperature up a little bit hotter so I can go up at even to 350 degrees to get those finished. If you want them to fall off the bone tender, you would wrap them and then you would take the wrapping off after about 30 minutes, sauce them and put them back on for about 15 minutes to let the sauce set up and then your ribs will be fall off the bone and saucy. I personally like this type of rib that has a little bit more bite to it. Um, it's got the bark still intact on it. And I just used a rub. I don't usually use a barbecue sauce on my ribs. All right, we have the rack that finished first on the bottom. You can see there's a little pink around the edges that is from the smoke. And then the same on the top. The top was a lot meatier. That's why they took longer to cook, um, but they both look great. We're about to eat and I'll let you know how they taste. I developed the process for cooking these ribs over the last few years and both racks definitely turned out great. Just always know if you have a meteor rack, it's going to take a little bit longer than those racks that are more lean, like the one that I just showed on the bottom. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. It really helps us out. If you want to see more videos in the future, hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out. Click any of the videos shown on the screen right now and it'll open up other videos from Grill This, Smoke That right on your device. And as always, I hope you guys have a great day.